One of the other things that I find really disturbing about the tech explosion in schools, and it's something that I didn't quite experience because I was a sort of a little bit too old. We didn't have smartphones until I was 18, 19, so I was basically leaving school, is um, is sexual bullying at schools, is things like using, it's not only kids watching porn because they've got the, the personal devices, it's also, you know, upskirting photos or sharing revenge porn or showing girls images in schools or whatever to, to basically intimidate them. There's like ho- absolute horror stories that come out. And, you know, we, we all know that obviously teenagers can be horrible to each other and always have been, but it seems as though this kind of tech enabled stuff takes it to it's taking it to another, level. another level. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. It's horror film stuff's happening. I've heard about it too. And I think, France have now banned under 18s from accessing any kind of porn in a very, very effective way with some kind of ID code. And apparently it's watertight and very impressively done. Um, And if France, the sort of most sex loving country in the planet, see the, you know, porn's not sex. It's 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 horror. Most of the stuff our children are seeing. Um, And it is becoming a tool in mixed schools, especially of of intimidation and humiliation on a whole different level and it's making girls you know um jean twenge said something like self-harm among 10 to 14 year olds um has quadrupled in the last 10 years that's among such young children not that that's necessarily to do with the porn though it's happening younger and younger um we have to we have to ban porn for for teenagers. They're they're beginning to not be able to be turned on by normal interaction between girls and boys because they're used to seeing such extreme imagery. So violence in a in a sexual setting is now completely normal. Girls feel they have to put up with it to sort of not be embarrassed by the boy, you know, the next day. And I think girls think it's sort of feminist to offer themselves immediately. Um, which, as you've said, makes them feel horrendous afterwards. And nobody's winning from the porn plague. And that's something else that we have to grow balls about and stop our young children being decimated by emotionally and mentally. I mean, I just find it amazing how often you'll hear, um, I mean, typically from adults who are sort of well beyond this this, this, um, this risk themselves, but the idea that having access to online porn is some sort of human right as if we it's incredibly novel technology that no one had access to you know until maybe 20 years ago vast majority of human history we basically just had access to drawings or our imaginations right which is fine I'm not intending to ban either of those things but yeah this is this is so novel and I think exposing adolescents to it or even younger kids to it is 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 using them like guinea pigs basically and 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 it seems to me that the precautionary principle should say that we should just we should just do everything we can to not permit children access to this until we have evidence that it's not harmful but the default assumption should be that it probably is harmful and anecdotal evidence definitely suggests that it is harmful absolutely i i know a friend who's in the comedy world i don't know if he's written about it so i can't say his name but he was exposed to his dad watching it wasn't even violent porn it was just normal porn when he was about eight and it's disturbed him in ways that he sort of it's not just a sexual thing it's disturbed him about life in general and made his wires go wrong in ways he's very evo- um what's the word eloquent about when you're with him um but it's deeply disturbing for a, a minor to see sex it is and the stuff they're now seeing now is on a whole new planet of depravity uh and it's going to make a whole generation of really malfunctioning very mentally ill angry screwed up scared people and i don't think my rhetoric is over the top i don't i think if you just read one of gene twenge's books or jonathan Haidt's books I don't think any adult with a heart would say that this stuff can should be accessible to children. To under 18s, I think, but as you say, that's difficult. Under 16s, get rid of it all. Porn, social media, smartphones, just unlimited internet access. It's, it's, all, it's all damaging and it's abusive 
to carry on letting it happen. It's it's a major dereliction. It's not even a dereliction of duty. It's actively abusive because we know what it's doing to children now. So not doing anything is abusive. And I would say that to all the politicians, you have to have an emergency meeting about this. You have to do as France has done. They've been led the way on the porn thing and do it with social media as well. I have had so many experiences of um, of speaking about this publicly and having um, particularly mums of teenagers, dads too, but mums more often, who'll pull me aside afterwards and say, I am so worried about this. I'm so distressed by this. I think that the, and I, I can't remember the numbers now, but I've read polling on what the British public think about um, children having access to porn. And, and uh, like, it's hard to come up with any issue on which the British public are more unanimous. I totally agree with you. Yeah, it, it, it's partly, well, there is there is definitely some um, willingness within Parliament. It's partly a technological issue, I guess. It's how exactly do you, do you, do you um, design the right restrictions? Although, as you say, other countries have, have managed it. Um, it's also, I think, a fear of, you know, some people think that if you ban under 16s, say, from accessing parts of the internet, you know, next step is to ban other citizens from doing, adult citizens from doing the same. And I say, yes, but I also think that the, you know, the the costs here are very, very the high. The upsides are too to the great. the psychological to... well-being. Yeah, exactly. I think that, I think that, I think we have to take this more seriously than we have until recently. And, you know, part of it's just keeping pace with the te- change of technology, even, even within five years, things change really quickly on this front. So it's partly just, it's also, you know, a bunch of like elderly MPs who just don't really, <laughs> you know, they don't really know Good. about any of this stuff. Yeah, no, they don't, bless them. And uh, that's why I keep, you know, banging this drum incessantly in the hope that they might, they might take it a bit more seriously. Well, I also think there's something in the British sort of national personality which has always been a bit rubbish about children whether it's putting them up chimneys in Dickens's time to terrible aristocratic neglect I think there's something very British about seeing children as a sort of pest um, and even, and it's not a poverty thing because you see poverty in Latin America and Africa and the children aren't harrowed like a lot of British children are. And as I say, it's not a poverty thing. It's, it's a sort of widespread, strange thing in our personalities where we see kids as just lesser than us rather than little people to be sort of really venerated and taken great care of. Um, and that maybe is why it hasn't taken precedence in parliament or in much national conversation because we don't think children are as important as we should do and that's something that has to change as well i was at something the other day um with catherine burblesing it was it was about uh a film called the sound of freedom i think oh yes i've not seen it but i've heard about it it yeah yeah that's yes and it was about child sex slavery and the huge proliferation of it all over the place, thanks in no part to the dark web, which is also could be disbanded very quickly if any of these people cared about it, but it makes too much money. Um, and she said, we just don't care about children. It's it, Maybe it isn't just a British thing. It's just, I think it is more British than other nationalities, but... She's done something in her school which has made the lives of the children she takes care of exponentially better. And instead of saying, let's have a look at what Catherine's doing and see where we can put it in other schools and she's willing to do a huge training programme, the, you know, our society hurls rotten apples at her saying she's strict and horrible and we attack her. And I find that very sad. And I don't know if that's just a tall poppy thing or a we can't be bothered to make children's lives better thing or whether it overlaps but I think it's a huge national problem we have to address and it's not just because the children are the future that's a sort of naff expression it's because children are precious and vulnerable and if we don't look after them we can't call ourselves a civilized society and I think we'd all like to call ourselves that. <laughs> 